Hello, my people, and welcome to the latest and greatest episode of... I want to see mountains again! Mountains! Today we're talking about the epic backpacking trip I took last month where my dear old friend Bumba and I spent three days in White River National Forest hiking around the Maroon Bells Four Pass Loop located about... 10 miles southwest of downtown Aspen, Colorado. Throughout this episode, I'll cover the basic details of the hike, and towards the end, I'll highlight a few key points that I think you should be aware of if you plan to hike the loop yourself. But before we get into that, just a little tidbit for those of you who don't know, on this channel, I'm all about sharing my thoughts and experiences on the best spots to check out and the best gear to bring with. So if, like me, you want to spend more time outside appreciating the finer things in life, do yourself a favor and consider subscribing. Also, feel free to check out the description below for links to the written version of this video in addition to all the information and resources we printed off the USDA website in preparation for this trip. Alrighty then, without further ado, let us begin. So, as I mentioned earlier, last month I flew out to Colorado to meet up with my dear old friend Bumba, who had just finished a week-long business trip in Denver. After sorting out all the food for the trip and reorganizing my gear in his hotel room, we hopped into his rental car and made the four-hour drive to the trailhead. We were expecting the hike to take about four days, so our plan was to try and get a head start and arrive at the trailhead early enough to hike a few miles and set up camp before it got dark that night. We're kind of losing daylight here. It's about 8 o'clock, but yeah, should be able to find a campsite before it gets completely dark, and hopefully it won't rain, but it was just pouring a minute ago, so we'll see. This was a pretty ambitious plan, especially since it started raining just after we left the car. We hiked for about a mile in the rain before actually discovering that we were going the wrong way. So we doubled back to try to find the turn that we had missed, only to discover that it was all the way back at the beginning of the trail near the parking lot. It was completely dark at this point, so we reluctantly decided to spend the night in the car and start the loop early the next morning. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly. After leaving our rental car at the West Maroon Portal parking area, we made some coffee by the gorgeous Maroon Lake and took advantage of the last bathrooms we would see for a few days. Following signs for trail number 1975, we made the short 1.4 mile trek to Crater Lake where we could begin the Maroon Bells four pass loop. All right, kids. When you come to the Maroon Bells Snow Mass Wilderness, make sure to fill out your registration forms. Otherwise, you can't get on the bus. Keep a copy for you. The loop's 28 miles, or 45 kilometers of trail, encircles the world-famous Maroon Bells, and wanders through some of the most glorious terrain I've ever encountered, including aspen groves, evergreen forests, wildflower meadows, and of course, four epic mountain passes. Along the way, we trudged through rivers and over snowfields, we even lost the trail a few times after scrambling over piles of scree and through splintered forests that had been mowed down by the crushing weight of avalanches caused by the previous winter's unusually heavy snowfall. Crazy. All right. I think this is where the loop starts. Uh, yep. So we want to go clockwise. Um, let's just make sure. Yes, I believe we do. All right. So it begins. We chose to hike a clockwise loop after a ranger told us that it would be easier for people who were not fully acclimated to the altitude. The first section of the loop follows trail number 1970, also known as the West Maroon Creek Trail, which tracks alongside the West Maroon Creek before it diverts here and begins its gradual ascent towards the West Maroon Pass. So we came from over there around the corner, which is about seven miles away. And now, we have got to follow this windy path up here, and then that ridge right there, that's the pass we're going over. And we have to do two of those. Once we reached the top of the pass, we headed down the other side, and after about a mile of switchbacks and wildflower meadows, we turned right following the signs for Frigid Air Pass. We just hit our 10th mile marker of the day. We're just shy of Frigid Air Pass in the Maroon Bells Snowmass Wilderness. And looking forward to getting over this second hump 
just because we hear there are some pretty dope campsites on the other side so yeah hopefully it won't be as bad as the first one this is a steep one after a short rest at the top we began our descent into the fravert basin along trail number 1974 also known as the north fork trail from which the maroon bells can be seen on the right hand side the trail then descends through a grassy meadow, then snakes through some pretty thick bushes over a couple creeks and into this evergreen forest near where we planned to camp for the night. After two passes and nearly 14 miles of hiking, we finally found an empty campsite. Have you ever seen a sexier patch of dirt? It's not off the trail, but there's a pit here. It's exactly what we want. That evening, the mosquitoes were out in force, so we lit a small fire to keep them at bay while we made dinner and set up our camp. The next morning, we continued our descent into the basin and crossed the North Fork before turning right onto trail number 1976, also known as the North Fork Cutoff Trail, where we began our ascent towards the Trail Rider Pass. After several steep switchbacks that give you a great view of the valley below, we crossed a small stream before turning right onto trail number 1973, also known as the Geneva Lake Trail. The trail then crosses back over the same stream and after a short ascent reveals an epic view of Trail Rider Pass. After the long trudge to the top, we were rewarded with a view of the beautiful Snowmass Lake on the other side, where we decided to camp for the night. The next morning, we took trail number 1975, also known as the Maroon Snowmass Trail, all the way up and over Buckskin Pass. So we can see the pass. We have to go all the way up there. This section of the loop barely had any signs or trail markers, and more than once we had to pull out the GPS to make sure we were going the right way. Lake number one. Almost done, baby. Almost done. That was where we went the first day. Once we made it back down to Crater Lake, we hiked out to the car, grabbed some beers and burgers in Aspen before heading back to Denver and flying home. Now I know that this is a very basic recap, so I want to let you know that I will be releasing a few more videos about this trip that get into more detail, but the plan is to focus those around more specific individual topics that I felt were too big to cram into this quick recap video. In addition to that, I'll also be releasing a longer video of the full three-day hike that will show you way more footage of the different environments and wildlife that we saw along the way. And it'll also serve as a way for you to see how we experience things firsthand compared to this video where I kind of just glossed over the main points. So now that you know some of the basics, I want to highlight some other important details that I think you should know before hiking the four pass loop. First, fires are only permitted at designated sites. If you get caught making a fire in the wrong place, you can be fined over $300. So make sure that you print out the maps provided in the USDA links below that show you which of the campsites have restrictions. Second is food storage. You are required by law to keep all food in an approved certified bear proof canister, details of which are also listed in the USDA resources linked below. I personally went with the larger of the two canister options because it's twice the size of the smaller one for way less than twice the price. It's also a much better camp stool compared to the smaller one. If you don't want to carry around a bear canister, there is one approved brand that makes a Kevlar bear bag, but it costs almost twice as much as the canister and can't be used as a camp stool or for other practical things like carrying extra water to your campsite, for example. So there you have it, folks. I want to wish a very warm welcome to those of you who are new to the channel. If this is the first video of mine that you've seen, I just want to let you know that I also make gear review videos in addition to the travel guides like this one. So if you're curious about some of the gear I used for this trip or you just can't wait to see my beautiful face again, I'll leave some links down below that should suit you uh, quite nicely. Alrighty, my people, that concludes this week's episode of the Finer Bub Show. Yeah, buddy. If you've already been to the Maroon Bells, or if you have any questions about our hike or suggestions for where we should go next, I'd love to have you comment below, especially if you think your insight can help me disprove something that I think I already know. But before you do, I just want to thank you oh so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. If you're planning your next trip, or looking for new gear, don't, don't let the small, small details, details stress you out. out. Remember, life's an adventure. So relax, breathe in the outdoors, and don't forget to appreciate the finer things in life. See you on the next one. Peace. We are prepared. Sort of. Very prepared. Over prepared, some might say. That's okay. Are we are we on the hard part for no reason? What? Let's let's go over here.
<laughs> Look at this. Oh, a trail. <laughs> it's much nicer. <laughs> So that clip you just saw, that was us going the wrong way. And we proceeded to go the wrong way for some way, good amount of way. About three quarters of a mile while it was pouring rain. Um, until, you know, we started following the path and it just turned around and headed in the wrong direction and yeah we Bumba smartly looked at his GPS and discovered that we were nowhere near the trail <laughs> that we were supposed to be on and <laughs> so after being very disappointed in ourselves we turned around and we walked back all the way to the beginning. But we still had some hope on our way back that we were gonna continue. Okay, yeah. We, we, we thought, okay, we didn't realize exactly where we went astray until we got all the way back to the beginning because this trailhead is nondescript. It's Especially hidden. in the dark. Especially it's hidden. Dark. Yeah, it was raining, it was dark. There was a big path. We took the big path. That's what happened. Yeah, it was my fault. I was excited about it. I mean, we should have, we both should have read where we were supposed to go. Yeah, we f***ed up. Should have known where we were supposed to go. We f***ed up. He's okay. Anyway. He's okay. Long story long. What happened next? On our way back, <laughs> we have our headlamps on. And uh, all of a sudden, Bumba spots a pair of eyes peering back at us through the darkness. Scare me. Scare me a lot. Heart pounding. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, yeah. We discovered it was a deer, and there were several of them. <laughs> but then, after we passed the deer, a while later, we saw a pair of eyes following us. One pair. And then that was a little spooky. And then we ran into some humans. That was And uh, yeah, that made us feel better. David, would you like a peanut butter jelly sandwich? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I've got you. What else happened? Oh yeah, so that's why we're in the car now. And we're gonna start tomorrow morning. Anyway, we'll see you in the morning. And uh, let that be a lesson to all of you. And to us. Read. <laughs> Pay attention. Make sure you're going the right way. Even if it looks like there's only one main big trail there. Plan your trip. Yeah, just... just Plan. Just don't, like, not sleep the night before and then show up after having, like, flown from Canada and then to America and then to Colorado. Which is not in America. It's in a different place. Peanut, peanut butter. Jelly. That was good. We'll insert that earlier. Did you finish that? Are you done? I don't know. What else is there to say? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're looking forward to starting our hike tomorrow. I don't say that. I'm taking that out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna bleep over the whole thing. And then I'm gonna be like, no, I'm taking that out. And then it's gonna, it's gonna Everyone, be in there and everyone's gonna be like, what the f did he say? And you'll never.